click the little got it uh, button. That should clear the thing out of your way, the little screen. And then uh, find your comfortable seat. <clears throat> As you're sitting, what you're really looking for is the central upright, central upright which rather than it being a physical material center, right? Like uh, the spine itself, it's more of a plumb line, sort of the mathematical place where the front and back, the two sides, top and bottom, the perineum and the crown all align and it's a, sort of just a space within us that we would that we would like to relax everything else around it so a lot of times we're we're thinking of finding balance by grabbing on to our center and holding our center right but that's a brittle sort of balance and also an unsustainable balance so it's more this idea of <clears throat> releasing everything that is unnecessary in terms of tension, grip, and hold through the body. And sort of to, to Jim's point, when he came in, he was talking about stiffness, achiness, limited range of motion. And so that's where we do our, our joint mobilization work to open because anywhere that, again, you might not be consciously going like this holding the body but there's areas of the body that are sort of stuck in a held state and so those are all over the body in different places kind of keeping us above our rooted plugged into the earth quality so that's really our main focus is central upright release tension so that the liquid fluid and energy quality of the body is flowing down and through to the earth to help with that breathing remember our body doesn't just sit like this when you take your next inhale you stretch open from the inside there's an expansion quality and then a softening quality with the exhale where everything melts and comes inward and then you inhale again, and there's this expansion, stretching, opening up of spaces. And then an exhale and a releasing of that subtle tension at the deep chassis of the body. And as you're sitting and doing your meditation, it's a great idea to feel free to do whatever the body asks of you, right? It could be stuff that we've worked on in our joint mobilization, or it could just be intuitive, right? So we'll just take another, let's say minute and a half here, breathing <clears throat> and anything the body wants to do. Like if I listen to my body right now, my shoulders, they want to shrug up a little bit and hold just for a second or two. I'm just listening to my shoulders. Well, now my head is doing a little turning to loosen up some tension there. And then there's a melting and a relaxing and kind of shake my head out. Okay, now my wrist wants to shake and come back. Elbow wanted to do this. My knees kind of butterfly to open up some hip tension. If you want to forward fold or you want to do some sort of movement, your body is speaking to you by its tension. Your tension and your pain is a yoga teacher or a Tai Chi teacher of sorts. Now my toes wanted to do a little wiggling. They're sort of lifting and spreading. So I'm listening to my body and honoring that intuitive body wisdom while breathing and while keeping an idea of this central upright, which 
is always present. Even if I'm leaning forward like this, I still got an idea that I have a line, a center line through the body and keeping that awareness of that. So just a final, let's say 45 seconds or so. Just getting in touch, breathing. And as you do move or, or make some little adjustment, remember the end result of it is a softening into presence. So that even if I'm tensing like I showed before, even if I'm shrugging on my shoulders, I'm kind of tightening things, but I'm not going to stay here. It's always going to return to uh, release so that my brain through the nervous system, out through the peripheral nervous system can network better. So there's just room and space within. Final 30 seconds or so. All right, let's move into our joint mobilization. So your hands are on your thighs. Slide the hands back, elbows back. Lift the chest, look up. And then the opposite. Slide the hands forward, drop the head, hollow the chest area. Oh. And then slide the hands back, lift the chest, arch. Oh. And slide hands forward and round. And just do this three, four, times and just getting the parts of the body the many little moving parts to lightly move just to ooze and slide and undulate around each other to give us this feeling of freedom And then let's settle back to the neutral position and then right into the rotation. Left hand forward, right hand and elbow back, turning. Oh, and then switching. Turn back through center, turning. And back through center, turning. And back through center. Let's do that two more times each way. So it's the quality of soft, supple, liquid, fluid, relaxed that we're looking for in terms of how to feel more balanced, more centered when we do stand up, when we do walk. So we have to cultivate a condition, a, 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 a quality in our body so that when we try and do the complicated thing of standing and walking and all that, that the body's in the best state for it. Arms down by your sides, softly lean uh, to your right. Left wrist just floats up, softly droop. And then droop, <sighs> droop, loose, and relaxed. And just notice that even though, you know, if you're seeing my body or you're feeling it in yours, I'm tipping and leaning and making this pretty, you know, big change. But my middle, the sort of belly level is the constant. There's a sort of quality of pivot like the center of a seesaw that isn't moving so that I can make all this change on either side of my body. And yet my middle retains its stability, its ease. And middle. Shoulder circles. So these shoulders that are just hanging out, we slide the shoulder blades away from each other, shoulders come forward. 
we shrug the shoulders up over the top and back and then slide them down the back nice and easy and then forward and up over the top and back and then under and forward and up over the top and back under forward and up over the top and back one more so again just dissolving cleaning clearing out whatever we're carrying around with us unnecessarily let's go the other way back and up over the top forward down Back up over the top, forward and down. Just remember too, in order to execute these movements, you are from your brain sending a command out through the uh, electrical circuitry of the nervous system into the receptor sites of the various muscle groups. And we're smoothing that out. Right, so in terms of the Parkinson's issues, right? Parkinson's is sort of like a, like a hectic nervous system. And so we wanna train smooth, control, polishing these pathways. All right, back to neutral, bend the elbows, hands come up. Same idea, smooth. So it's not just what we're doing, right? We're lifting the elbows out and up and then bringing them down wrapping them around in front, squeezing. But think about doing it with a polishing idea that you're just moving smooth, not adding extra tension. You're just finding the ease quality. Squeeze elbows together. Uh, Jim, squeeze your elbows together, not your hands. There you go. So you feel how that makes a huge difference in terms of your middle and upper back congestion. Flared out and up. And then down and around. And then from this position, we bring the elbows back behind, squeeze all those upper back muscles like a sponge. And then elbows down, forward, up. And then elbows forward, down, back. Oh, so we're unpacking the tissue and structure relationships between the arms, the shoulder blades, the chest, the back. This even helps our neck and head. This helps down through our uh, back towards the hips and legs as well. So just make sure we're not stuck in these movement relationships. Elbows out to the side, one above, one below. The below hand goes under the armpit and hug your own body. Crawl your hands around and give yourself a decent little squeeze. And then relax and release, and the hands and elbows, or the elbows, sort of float out to the side, buoyant, loose. Then we switch the other hand under, other hand over, crawl the hands around, give yourself a nice little squeeze. And then relaxing, feeling that relaxing sort of buoyancy that just floats the elbows out. And then one more of each. Oh. Out. In. Oh. Goes down onto your legs. All right. Now, right knee lifts and right heel gets drawn back in. So this is what's called chambering and then push, fully extend, re-chamber, and then set that foot down. Other, chamber, push, chamber, down. Push, chamber, down. Chamber, push, chamber, down. Keep doing that, please. So our middle, our middle, not just our central upright, but that's like the, the front or the uh, top to bottom middle, but then the front to back middle where the navel, the belly button connects to your lower back, 
So a line from there, from the belly button back and from the top down, this is our center. So as we're moving all of our limbs around that center, we're, we're opening up this quality in the middle. Okay, keep that in mind as we get ready to stand up. So float your right leg out, point foot, flex foot. Then invert, evert, the foot tilts a little in, a little out, a little in, a little out, in, out, in. Now circles, in and around. Out and around. And then set that foot down. Sorry, I gotta let somebody in here. Other foot, just soft, easy extension of the leg so you can point flex, point flex. And then tilting the foot slightly in, slightly out, slightly in, slightly out. It's called inversion, eversion. Then the circle, in and around. <clears throat> and out and around. And done. Scoot back to the front edge of your chair. If you scooted, uh, uh, scoot forward to the front edge of your chair, if you scooted back. So again, same idea about our middle that this is really what we're looking for in terms of a quality of feeling balanced and agile and able to move around without really rocking the boat all over the place. It's this middle quality. And the idea with Tai Chi and Qigong is that we are de-starching. We're clearing out this, this compression and congestion around the middle so that our middle is, is an open space rather than a compressed area. So with that idea, we do our swivel steps as well here. So your left foot, lift the toe, turn the knee and toe out. Then lift the heel a little bit, turn the heel out, knee in. Then lift the toe, toe out, knee out. So you notice I'm opening, I'm opening this space. Heel out, knee in, one more time, toe out, knee out. So now we're at a pretty wide stance and then walk that foot in, toe in. Heel in, toe in, heel in. One more, toe in. Now let's do that again. And eventually we can just walk it out. So we just go one, two, three. It's called swivel steps. Four and <clears throat> five. Walk it in, two, three, four, five. And then this side here, one, two, three. Four, one more, five, and then walk it in. Two, three, four, five, and once more. One, two, three, four, five, in. Both legs at the same time. One, two, and three, and then we bring them in. One, two, three. One more. So we're clearing out this space as it relates to our middle. And we're back. Huh. Legs, hip distance. Now we work on pelvis, right? Just a moment ago, we were doing legs moving, pelvis stable or still. Now legs stable, pelvis moving, hip hinging, folding forward, sitting back to vertical, tipping back, sitting vertical. So here we're getting a feeling for the power, the potency, you could say, of moving the body in the right way, the efficient way. So nothing is changing through my spine, shoulders, arms, knees, anywhere. The only joint that's moving is where my legs and my pelvis are connecting, the hip sockets, the hip joint. 
And when you move from there, you're making a humongous change in your relationship to gravity. And if that area gets closed off and stuck, which it tends to do, then it ruins all kinds of basic, you know, easy abilities in terms of sitting, standing, moving, going upstairs, up curves. So we got to get this space supple and free and loose. Now, sitting vertical, slide the feet back a little bit. So when it comes time for you to stand up, let's say you're sitting, you're eating dinner, or you're at a lecture, or you're somewhere, and you're sitting, first thing you want to do when it's time to stand up is slide the feet a little underneath you, then hip hinge. So we just spill our body weight down to the earth through the legs. We don't fight the earth. We use the earth. The earth is our friend. The stability of the earth. The ground is very useful. And then to sit down, we keep our connection to the earth through the legs. We just fold at these hips, like I described, and then just sink the tush. Nice and easy. Find the chair. So nothing else has to work. We don't have to overdo anything in the shoulders, the head, the neck, the legs even. Just soft. This is the discovery of the Taoists, the Tai Chi people, the Qigong people, is that Oh, this body operates best when it's just relaxed. But we just have to learn where our middle is and move from that middle. One more, easy. <clears throat> now, don't sit in your chair, but act as if you're going to sit in your chair. And then don't and stand back up. Use this movement as if you just dropped your glasses or you dropped a pen that you need to get to. So if I have to get my hands to the floor, I don't want to ah, instead butt back, sink, and now I'm near the floor and my hands can grab whatever it is, and then you can just push through the earth and stand back up. And again, it's just not dangerous, and in fact, it feels good. <clears throat> the hips love it. The spine loves it. So this is the Tai Chi squat, which is very different than the weightlifting fitness squat. This one is just all about just finding the way through. Soft, loose, easy movement. All right, great job. Okay, and uh, as to uh, Ilana's question, she's asked a few different times with this, she was talking about the, the danger of sort of always being back in the heels and almost falling backwards a lot. So let's just do an exercise for that. So come to your chair so you got some safety there. And we're going to rock forward into the toes and rock back into the heels. And some of you might decide to play with not using the chair, but having it ready for you in case of emergency. Tipping forward to the toes, tipping back to the heels. Now, remember what I said about the middle. Where is your middle? What you don't want to be doing with this one is this and this. You see, I'm, 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 wait, I'm thinking my middle is somehow up here, when if my middle's down here and this is all relaxed, then when I lean back, it's just this easy little tilt, but I keep my middle. This easy little tilt, I keep my middle. So I would suggest this as a basic practice for everybody when you're waiting for your tea kettle, you're waiting for something in the microwave or oven, just get your hands somewhere safe and rock back and forth so that you're not stuck in one of these places, but you feel the whole range forward and back. Now let's take this one step further, rock forward and then lift all the way to your tippy toes, up, 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 up. Then back down, rock back to your heels and lift the toes and ball of foot off the floor, right? Eventually, you can actually somewhat balance on the heels. Rock forward, lift to your tippy toes. Back down, rock back, lift the toes, the ball of foot. Forward, lift. Back. So usually what gets us in trouble in terms of balance is that we're not free enough 
right? Think about a tree. The more brittle a tree is, then when the wind comes, it snaps because it can't lean and tilt and move and let it move through, right? So that's the, the idea of suppleness, softness as a form of strength, right? We see it in nature. We see it in nature, okay? So now let's come back to our starting position. You've got your chairs to your in front of you wide apart. Move a little bit more to your right side chair. This is my left side your right side, be able to touch the chair if you need it, but try to not have your hands on the chair. Now change the weight to your left leg, lift the right heel and get to the tippy tippy toe of the right shoe or the right foot. Then lower that whole foot to the floor with no body weight. Change the weight now into your right leg. Left leg feels a little emptier. Lift to the tippy, tippy toe, lower the foot back down, no body weight, change the weight. Get to the tippy toe, so the heel comes, the tip of the shoe, change. And so notice when I change my weight from my middle, I'm not doing this and this to try to change leg to leg, it's happening inside here and I'm retaining that upright and creating an empty leg and a full leg and then getting good at changing so that now this is full, this is empty and it's the emptiness of the leg that allows it to do what it is that we wanna do. So now add this second level which is lifting the foot, placing it right back down but empty then changing the weight into that leg. This one is free, lifts, lowers, shift and change. Lift. So at first, this is a great example of we, we break it into pieces. We change leg, we lift, we lower, we change. Eventually, however, <coughs> it can almost feel simultaneous. As in, as this foot's coming down, I'm pouring the weight and lifting. And then this foot comes down and I'm pouring the weight and lifting. So as I open those spaces, that's when efficient movement can happen. So it's not like you're gonna be walking around in slow motion all the time necessarily, but you have to slow it down to find these mechanics to undo some of the bad habits, All right? Now, empty your right foot, the foot closest to this chair, place the foot out in front with the heel softly touching like this. Not way out in front, just a little small step. Now, let the body weight shift into that right leg and you've moved somewhat forward in space. And then shift into your left leg. Shift into that right leg. Same thing, moving from your middle so that there's no leaning and leaning. It's just this relaxed, easy, balanced upright body, changing weight. The primary direction when we're moving forward and back or any direction is down, down to the earth, down to the earth, down to the earth, down to the earth. Now, and I, whenever I turn sideways, you just keep facing forward. I'm turning this way to show you something. So now the next thing is we lift that right foot off the ground. So you may need your chair for this. And we're lifting from the hip then lowering the heel back down, shift. Then once this back foot's empty, do a little flamingo lift. You bend the knee, this foot disconnect, place the toe back where it was, and then shift. Then from this empty hip, lift, lower, shift. Flamingo, toe down, shift. So this is level two, lift, lower, Shift, the middle is still, is still, the body upright is intact, 
and we're just working on empty full and the freedom of that leg. Change empty full, freedom of the other leg. Teacup just resting on top of the head. No spilling. Now, level three, hand on chair as needed, not only lifting the leg, but letting the knee bend and floating it as high up as it can go. And then down, heel touching. Shift. Now, your back leg, not only heel to butt, but also bring this knee forward and up so that we can practice this one, which is reaching back with the foot. Find the earth, no body weight, and then shift. Knee up, down, shift, forward and up, back to the toe, shift. Two more level threes. Someday you might try to do it, no hands. Just remember the relationship to the earth is your primary focus. And then everything else up here. It's just loose and free. All right, switching sides. So you have to get closer to this chair. So feet together, side step, shift over, hand near the chair if you need it. Now the weight goes through your right leg. Left foot is empty. Put it out in front. Remember, just a short stance, small stance. And we shift. Get to the tippy toe. Shift back, get to the tip of this heel. Shift, shift back. Middle, floating. Primary direction, down. Primary direction, down. Like plugging a plug in a socket every time. Plug into the earth, plug into the earth. Everything else, relax, relax. One more, level one. Level two. Lift, lower, shift. Flamingo, down, shift. From the hip, shift. Everything relaxed. Minimal effort. Eventually, it can feel like zero effort to move around. That's when you know you're starting to cultivate, starting to like cross the threshold into really doing Tai Chi, is when everything starts to feel kind of like, ooh, I'm not working very hard and yet still accomplishing what we're trying to accomplish. So it's addition by subtraction, dissolving, releasing. Now, level three. For safety, you probably need a hand on the chair at least for the first one. Knee up, heel softly touch down, and then shift. Now this one, heel to butt and knee up, like you're about to step up a curve and then reverse and shift. So not only is this important, but that's actually easier than what we do here where we're bringing both forward and up but then there's a balanced equilibrium here. As you reach your foot back, a lot of times people fall backwards. So you're keeping your center as you go find the floor behind you. Shift. Again, this one, keeping your equilibrium, keeping your equilibrium, and shift. One more. Easy, loose, relax. Switch back to the first side, feet together, side step, we're back here. Set up level one, right foot in front, small stance. Now we're gonna take it one step further, literally. Shift, as this foot's empty, you just swing the foot forward and put the heel out in front, and then shift. So we're taking one full step, then we go backwards. Shift back. Empty front foot, swing it back, toe touches the floor, but no body weight, and then shift back. Shift forward, take one small step, shift forward. 
Right leg becomes full, step the empty left foot, left foot becomes full. Shift into the right leg, step an empty floating foot, safely stepping, and then shift. Shift back, swing back softly, shift back. So effort free, easy. Level two, might need hand on chair. So now we add, we've got this lift and lower that we recognize. Shift, and now the back foot has to step up and over something. So it's picking the foot up and bringing it over the top and landing it, and then shifting. And then we add the flamingo, shift back. Now, this is often a little tricky. Up, tuck, reach, and then shift back. Lift, lower, shift. Up and over, shift, flamingo, lift, lower, <clears throat> shift back, up, tuck, reach, find the floor with the toe with no body weight, shift. One more time, level two, lift, lower, shift, up and over, shift, flamingo. Shift, up, tuck, find the floor without putting your body weight, and then shift. Level three, again, use chair as needed. Lift, heel down, shift, and now we just kind of exaggerate that stepping over. So it's heel to butt, knee all the way up, foot floating out, Softly lower the foot, <clears throat> shift forward, and we bring this right knee forward and up, reach it back, shift back, and again, a sort of exaggerated version of knee, foot, reach, find the floor, shift, knee up, down, shift, heel, knee, foot, down, shift, and just notice the stillness. Like I was saying before, we're opening up the spaces and length by finding these ranges of motion, but the middle is a constant. It's just a constant still place from which everything is operating. It's like the, the cockpit is this middle. And a lot of times our tension brings us up here and makes us easier to fall over. But as we loosen all that, we find, oh, this is our middle, this area. And then we can rely on this and let everything else be supple. Switch sides. Step. Left foot is empty. Put it in front. Level one. The most like regular walking. <clears throat> So it's just an easy shift, step, an easy shift. And again, primary direction is down. Down through one leg to the earth, down through the other leg to the earth. That frees the other foot to step, and then you go down through the leg to the earth on this side. Down, 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 down. And so in a moment, we're about to pick the foot up and step it up, right? The freedom of up is reliant upon the down. So here, have the correct down relationship and practice lift, lower, and then get the correct down relationship here so that this foot is free to step. And then the down relationship, so we can do our little flamingo, shift. Down relationship correct, so we can lift, tuck, reach. Shift down. The down quality is what makes this no problem. The down quality is what makes this up and over step no problem. Down, heel to butt. Level two. So our mind usually gets, gets distracted by the lifting leg, the stepping leg, 
but it's made possible by the unseen standing leg relationship. So it's a shift of what you think is important that makes a difference. Like, oh, it's this that allows this. And then it's this that allows that. This allows for that. This allows for that. So that's level two. And then that same rule applies for level three, which is just maximum lift, lower, shift, heel to butt, knee up, foot out, descend, shift, knee forward and up, back. And just notice the middle is still, body upright is intact, limbs are loose, <clears throat> just floating along. One more. And together. Shogun, wings, turn your palms up, fold up and over top. Settle, settle, settle down to the middle, which is your belly. This position called middle embrace. So look at my hands here. Fingers relating to each other. Shoulders and elbows soft, sort of like a hose or conduit. And it's right at this navel, this belly button height. And everything's softening, 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 loose as can be. Okay, so now move to the left side of your space. So use the chair, get over to the left side. So notice I'm almost off the screen. That's how far to this side that I've come. You can barely see me. The chair is there for my safety if I need it. Relax the arms, find your body upright and your middle and all that good stuff and face across the way. So now you've got a runway a runway. Now, empty left foot, put it in front, level one. Shift, step, shift, step, shift, step, shift, step, shift. When you get to the end of your runway, shift back. Make sure your front foot is empty. Step it behind you without putting any weight in it. Then shift back into it. Front foot empty. Step it behind you, no body weight. Shift back. Step behind you, shift back. Step behind, shift back. And again, forward. Shift, step. Shift, step. Primary direction is... Down to the earth, down to the earth, down to the earth. Reverse, same thing, primary direction, whether we're going backwards or forwards, is down to the earth, down to the earth, down to the earth. The more relaxed you are, the easier it is to get down there. Level two, lift, lower. Now, shift. Here, it's like there's always an obstacle to step up and over. But remember, it's the down to the earth that allows that freedom of the foot to come up. So it's not about yanking the foot up. It's about emptying it so it's buoyant. And to empty it, you have to really use the other leg as the standing leg. Be careful here. So Jim, it looks like you're turning around every time. Do you notice that I'm not turning around? I'm walking forwards and then I'm walking backwards. Free the foot and remember, use the chair for safety. Up, tuck, reach, find the floor. Shift back. Up, tuck, reach, 
shift back. Let's do one more level two. So that means every time you step a foot, you're stepping over something, whether it's a, a rock or a curb uh, that or a part of the sidewalk that's a little off center, or it's a toy on the ground, or it's a carpet, or whatever it may be, there comes a time when we need to be able to pick up the foot and bring it over something. Pick it up and bring it over something. But we want to not disturb our equilibrium, our balance, our quality of ease when we do that. All right, great job. Now we're going to do our side step. So stay to the left side of your space, and you've got the runway to your right now. And empty your right foot <clears throat> and step it out to the side, step it back in. You're going to do that a few times. So this foot goes out and in. Now your focus here is to step without the body weight leaving this leg. Bring it in. So it's the empty foot that then allows you to maybe move it like I'm moving it a little bit faster. I couldn't do that if every time I step, my body weight came with it. There's a clumsiness. Whereas when you find this, then there's a freedom, a quickness, a swiftness that's available. That's what Tai Chi is training, okay? Now, bring the right foot out, leave it there, shift. Right full, left empty. Shift back. Left full, right empty. Middle, body upright, teacup balanced. Now, you're in your right leg, left is empty, Bring the left in, left back out. No body weight the entire time so that you feel light, free, and empty at this hip so that this foot is free to do all kinds of things, but it's not disturbing this stillness. The next time the left foot comes in, now bring the feet as close together as you can. This one is maybe the most important. Change the weight down through the left leg so your right foot is empty. Change the weight back, down through the right, left foot empty. Change, change. Find that fulcrum, that pivot, that mechanism inside. It's a combination of the hips, the belly, and the lumbar spine that allows us to change weight, but it's an internal mechanism that we need to find, right? Now, the next time you're in your left leg, right foot should be empty, step it sideways, shift. So now you're in your right leg, left foot is empty, bring it in, floating it in, and then change right here in this close together stance, stepping out, change, stepping in. Change, stepping out, change, stepping in, change, stepping out, change, stepping in. Let's go back, out, change, in, change. Don't spill your teacup. Balancing. And again, this body upright quality it's not something we are holding ourselves. The opposite. We're relaxing so that this connection all the way down to the earth is what gives us our upright quality. So it's free. It's loose. We're not getting exhausted because we're holding on up here. Soft. Loose. Sidestep. And those of you that come to our Friday class, the Tai Chi class, right? You start to recognize bear wash paws, which is just shifting, turning, bear snatching fish. All this movement up here, right? But 
this is the same shift step shift step and all that let's say this is hands play with clouds right the only thing i'm adding this can be highly confusing until you understand it all i'm adding is a little bit of a shift and a turn step shift and a turn step and then my octopus tentacles are free floating exploring but my middle retains its stillness change so the teacup potentially still hasn't spilled a drop let's go there and back one more time with every shift there's a turn stepping in with every shift there's a turn stepping out So in some ways, it doesn't even matter what the hands do. They can do a number of different combinations. But what's constant is this change. And this is just doing sideways walking. Then there's, of course, forward walking, backward walking. Turning is available as well. But you notice just underlying it is this simple but powerful change of weight. All right. Closing. Shogong. Arms out, over the top, settling down to what's called middle embrace, like I described earlier. What this does is just think about the journey of your chi, your life force, as when we're doing movement, it's coming out and expanding into the body. And then when we're stopping for a moment, we're letting it settle, settle, consolidate, and return to its resting place. So we're finding this moment of doing nothing. And then we'll finish with rotational movement, movement in the rotational plane, okay? So now stand in between your chairs on either side. Weight goes through the left leg, right foot is empty. Turn the right foot out and notice your hips kind of turn, your torso kind of turns a little bit to this corner, to your right. Then bring the foot back to neutral, everything's forward or neutral. And then turn the toes in and the heel out, the leg in, the body, the pelvis turns a little bit to this left corner. And then we come back to neutral, turn it out. Now let's skip neutral and just turn from the out position to the in position. It's a great challenge for your equilibrium. If you're holding on to tension in your body, this is going to throw you off. You have to relax to be able to rotate, rotate, and not get dizzy, not feel like you're throwing yourself off. So there's a soft, loose quality that's required. And Back to neutral. Let's do that for the other leg. Change your weight to your right leg. Turn left foot out. And let's just go right to the turn in position. Out. Turn in. Out. In. Out. In. One more. And we're back to neutral. Now, change the weight again. Right foot empty, turn it out. Now, the right foot is empty. We shift into the right leg. The body then turns a quarter turn. So now the whole body is facing the right side and bring the left foot to match the right foot. And then we're going to do that again. So empty your right foot, turn it out. Shift into the right foot. Remember, primary direction is down to the earth. Bring the left foot next to the right foot. Change the weight to the left foot. Turn the right foot out again. Remember, primary direction is down to the earth as you turn. Change the weight to the left. Turn the right foot out. Rotate. So now you just changed your orientation to, to space. Uh, 360 degrees. Let's do that once more. Empty right foot. The, the empty quality is why it can turn out so easily. And we just change the weight and we just easily change the orientation. Empty the right foot, turn it out. Change. And even though, again, we're not going anywhere, 
but the power of changing your orientation to space is really important, right? In terms of, so let's say you got to sit on the toilet or you got to get sitting in a chair and the chair is in front of you or it's to the right of you. You have to orient yourself to it. Now we're going to go the other way. Left foot turn out, shift and rotate. And one of the number one times people fall is when they're turning. When the phone rings over to the left of you and you go, oh crap, I got to get that phone. And you just turn and and, and down you go, right? So it's this ability to really feel like, okay, I'm gonna change my orientation in a safe, balanced, controlled way. And that doesn't mean it has to always be slow, right? In fact, if you move efficiently, but correctly, you move quite fast, quite fast. Now the slightly weirder one, instead of turning your right foot out, turn the right foot in, shift into that right foot and now you turn slightly uh, a quarter turn or so to your left then we do that again right foot empty turn the right foot in shift and now you're facing away from you should be facing away from the camera there jim if you've done it correctly turn your right foot in shift onto that right foot let the body then turn to the left again another quarter turn Turn your right foot in, shift, and reorient yourself. Do that again. So if you're confused by it, watch me do it. In, right? Which is very different than out. In, shift, reorient. In, shift, reorient. In, shift, reorient. Do that to your left, left foot in, shift and reorient. Remember primary direction, primary direction, down. So the left foot is empty, which allows me to change its position. And then my primary direction is down through it. And then it's em I empty it so that I can change its orientation and then down. So all I'm doing is just staying connected to the earth, staying connected to the earth, relaxing the body. And again, if we had three legs, if we were a being that had three legs, we would practice this differently. But we have two legs. So it's this separate, 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 right? And finally, to finish our practice today, we put those last two together. Watch me do it, please. Don't do it unless you really know it. But if you're new to it, just watch. Right foot turns out. I shift into there and I take my left foot and do that pigeon toe step. I turn that left foot pigeon toe and then shift. And now I was able to, in two foot movements, get 180 degrees. And then I do that once more. Right foot, change. Left foot turn in change and I'm back to facing where I started. So let's do that together. Right foot turn out, shift down through it. Left foot stays empty long enough for you to pigeon toe it and then shift into it. And you can turn 180 degrees in space in two foot movements and then do it again. One foot movement, shift the weight, turn the foot in, Shift the way. Get back to where we started. Once more. Turn. See you, David. And finishing by going the other way two times. Turn left foot out. Shift and turn. Pigeon toe. Shift and turn. Shift and turn. And one thing I'd like to just show in terms of the wrong way. So this is the problem. If my body's upright, how easy is this? It's easy. But all it takes is... 
And now I'm swinging my butt around my neck, my shoulders. I'm, I'm adding all these variables that can kind of get out of orbit, right? Like, like losing connection, losing orbit. So if, if you're looking down at the ground the whole time or you're, or you're letting your butt stick out and your head is up like this, which is very common. I'm exaggerating it, of course, but this subtly is happening. So this position is the Tai Chi primary position that then you go, oh, I can now use empty, full, empty, full, turning, rotating, all kinds of things can happen that are not really available and they are less safe when we have ourselves in this bad position. So when you're practicing at home, please do practice standing, uh, chin down, crown slightly, or a back of neck up rather than this. Notice that this is probably where you go when you feel a little scared, where you feel a little tired. There's some sort of loss of this through line. And then you're at your countertop and just work on empty, full, change, empty, full, maybe lift, maybe you do a little forward and back, just rock to the toes, rock to the heels, get this quality and find as many places as you can practice it just throughout your day, right? Because that's always Alana's question, which is a good question. How do I put this into practice? But my answer is with every single movement that you're about to do from the end of class on, there's an opportunity. If you understand what we're doing, posture. If you're going to take a step anywhere, change the weight, put the foot out, change the weight, put the foot out, right? Work on relax, loose, light, and easy, okay? So if there's any further questions, please uh, feel free to unmute, but great job today, and uh, yeah, see some of you on Friday, I hope, uh, for Tai Chi. Oh, no. Oh, yes, I am here Friday. Okay, yeah, so I'm here on Friday. And final thing too, just remember, um, 